Hidden within North Korea is a palace worth hundreds of millions of dollars, yet no one lives inside it. But this wasn't always the case. In fact, one of the country's most important figures called this landmark their home. Today, we're going to explore the story of the Kumsasung Palace of the Sun and its current situation. We'll also see one of the country's other important residences and another abandoned building that holds an unwanted world record. On top of this, we'll examine another huge residential property across the globe that is deserted for one reason or another. So let's get started. The Kumsasung Palace of the Sun was first built in 1976. Then it was known as the Kumsasung Assembly Hall. After its creation, it served as the main residence of the then leader and founder of North Korea, Kim Il-sung. For 18 years, Il-sung enjoyed the palace, but by 1994, he passed away. As a result, his son Kim Jong-il took over as leader of North Korea. However, it didn't feel right to move into the Kumsasun Palace, so Jong-il converted the former home into a mausoleum for his late father. The cost of this endeavor is believed to have been as much as $900 million. Ah, but there are some reports that it was far less at $100 million as well. Il Jung's remains were placed in a clear glass sarcophagus and left on display for visitors to pay their respects to. Along the walls inside the palace, many portraits and photographs of Il Sung and his achievements throughout life are displayed. The palace also showcases the various gifts he received from across the world. Yet by 2011, Kim Jong Il would also follow in his father's footsteps and pass away, leaving his son Kim Jong Un to lead North Korea. During his funeral, the palace served as a start and end point for the procession. This procession lasted three hours and was 25 miles long altogether. The Kumsasung Palace was then closed to the public for a year. In December 2012, it opened back up again on the first anniversary of Jung Il's passing. Now, it had the remains of the former North Korean leader on display in the same fashion as his father, along with also having portraits and photographs of his life's achievements immortalized. The Kumsasung Palace also displays the train carriage that Jong Il passed away in as a sort of macabre artifact. The palace also has a number of Jong Il favorite items on display, such as his beloved vehicles, his yacht, outfits, medals, and other personal items. During the year it was closed, the grounds around the palace were also renovated. Now there are water fountains and a flower garden for visitors to enjoy. In 2013, the North Korean government declared the Kumsasung Palace of the Sun as a national landmark, thus ensuring it is continuously maintained and protected in the future. As we mentioned earlier, visitors are allowed into the Kumsasung Palace of the Sun but with some conditions. For starters, the visitors have to dress up in formal wear, so the attire for most tourists is banned, such as shorts, t-shirts, and anything casual. No open footwear is allowed either, such as flip-flops and sandals. The visitor also has to have neat hair. Both the remains of the former leaders are constantly guarded by armed security. Photography inside is not allowed. In fact, visitors aren't allowed to have anything in their pockets at all. All items are put into a locker on arrival. The visitors then have to go through a number of checks. First, there's a machine that cleans the person's shoes, as the palace is seen as a sacred place. The visitors then have to go through a scanner to make sure no items slip through. The visitors also have to bow throughout their visit, most often when seeing the statues of the former leaders and the remains. Upon entering where the remains are, the visitors are blasted by air to blow away any loose particles, as they could be damaging to the remains. One person has even said that during their visit, they placed their hands in their pocket. Their guide came over and pulled their hands out from their pockets. Respect is incredibly important inside this palace. All of North Korea's leaders had multiple residences to relax in, yet they tend to have one that is their main base. For Kim Il-sung, it was the Kumsasun Palace. For the current leader, Kim Jong-un, it's the Ryong-sung Residence, also known as Residence Number no. 55 and the Central Luxury Mansion. Based in the Ryong-sung District in the capital city of Pyongyang, it was first built in 1983. Altogether, the complex is around 4.6 square miles. For comparison, that's around the same size as the whole of London's Heathrow Airport. There are very few pictures of the building, but those that exist show a stunning garden and immaculate interior. The residence is also very protected. 
it's surrounded by an electric fence and landmines. There's various checkpoints for visitors, and the whole area is guarded by a battalion of soldiers. The house also has an underground tunnel that connects to other buildings belonging to Jong-un. North Korea is also home to another huge building that no one resides within, the Ryong Hotel. In fact, it currently holds the unwanted Guinness World Record for tallest building unoccupied. It's 330 meters tall, or 1,082 feet. That's taller than the Eiffel Tower at 1,063 feet. Nicknamed the Hotel of Doom, the Ragyong Tower began construction in 1987. By 1992, the hotel reached its intended height at 105 stories. The top of the hotel was meant to feature rotating restaurants. However, construction was halted. At this time, North Korea was experiencing economic turmoil due to the collapse of the Soviet Union. Some reports have said that the hotel had cost $750 million. A decade later, the hotel was revisited again. However, there were many structural problems within. Even the building materials used were seemingly poor quality. In 2008, construction was underway once more. The Egyptian contractors, Oriscom Firm, were put in charge. At the same time, they were working on a $400 million deal in North Korea to build a 3G tower. But the construction once again stopped. The dormant hotel hasn't had a guest at all. The failed building towers above the city skyline, making it very difficult to ignore. The Ryong Hotel has been involved in a few events, such as being used in fireworks displays and a light installation by the artist Kim Young il on the Croatian island of Kuruk sits a resort hotel that's been left to nature for decades, the Haladovo Palace Hotel, as it's most commonly known. It's gone through a number of name changes throughout the years. First opened in 1972, the hotel was marketed towards the very wealthy. Even Saddam Hussein was said to have visited the hotel. The founder of Penthouse Magazine invested $45 million into the resort in order to build a casino. The following year, the casino was bankrupt and closed. Originally, the hotel provided various luxuries for their guests' indulgences as they frolicked in the sun, such as the classic wealthy treats of caviar and lobster. The guests were served by the hostesses, which were called pets at the hotel. There were even rumors that there was a swimming pool filled with champagne. However, the luxury taste was toned down substantially soon after its opening. This happened when there was a lack of foreign interest spending money at the resort. In 1991, the Yugoslav War took a hold of the island. As such, the Haladova was massively affected. The hotel helped house refugees within during the huge conflict. However, the hotel's appliances and furniture were stolen. The hotel then began changing hands to various private groups. Even though the Croatian government has tried to encourage the owners to rebuild the resort over the years, the owners haven't. It's completely abandoned to this day. Final fact finish. The leaders of North Korea are known for their expensive tastes. Kim Jong-il loved lavish liquors, especially Hennessy's cognac. During the mid-90s, he was apparently spending $800,000 per year on the luxury brand. The bottles were for himself and gifts for others. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next time.